as the kids would say, uh, man, it is so much going on in the world. So many things to distract us from the perfect will and plan of God for our lives. What he has spoken over us as a body of believers and the enemy has uh, just fought Jesus because he knows Jesus' purpose and plan. He couldn't stop Jesus coming into the earth to die for the sins of the whole world. So he fights the church. Hallelujah! The church that Jesus established, the foundation for believers, the place for us to gather and fellowship, to receive witness and revelation, knowledge and understanding of God's word. And so here we are in a war-torn world. Uh, some are fighting against each other. Some are fighting against truth. Some are fighting against the knowledge of Jesus is the Messiah. He is the soon coming king that he's been on earth once and he's coming back again. And the enemy wants to get as many people as possible to burn with him in the lake of fire. That is his eternal damnation. And so he is distracting. He is dividing. He's causing racism. He's causing hatred to inflame. He's causing one culture or one race to believe that they are better than another and degrade and low rate other races. But God created us in his image and after his likeness. So he sees all of us the same. Hallelujah. No matter what our skin color is. No matter what our demographics are, hallelujah. If we want to please God and be in his perfect will, that means that we have to get in God's word, read his word, understand his word, and the nature of who we are made as a people by God to look like him and to act like him. So it's a time for us to examine our character to examine our relationship with the Lord. If you don't have a personal, intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit, it is so very necessary in these end times to know God and to be able to hear him and listen to him and hear what he has to say. I hear so many people say, well, you know, I got the situation. I prayed about it. I asked God about it. Um, but you haven't even entered into God's presence. You haven't even, hallelujah, you have not worshiped God. Hallelujah, he's just not going to let you in because you knock at the door. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says that my sheep, the Lord says, my sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not follow. So unless you are a sheep, unless you belong to God. He's might, he might not hear what you're saying unless you are repentant, unless you are saying that I believe in the living son of God, the only begotten son of God. He might not hear your conversation. And so I'm just coming to you today to let you know that God is speaking, that he is declaring his holy word and he is bringing truth before us and he's bringing his righteousness before us so we have a choice we can choose who we're going to believe are we going to follow the lies of the enemy in this world because the bible says that if we are friends with the world then we are enemies of god and i want to share um, this revelatory word this morning that the lord began to speak after i read scripture after i started having a talk and relationship with him i entered into covenant with god by reading his word that's part of our covenant relationship is that we read the word of God to understand it, to apply it to our daily lives. Revelations 8 and 3, I was reading the entire chapter, but after the third verse, the Lord began to speak. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne and this is when the lord began to speak and he wanted me to know that you know he was hearing my cry and he's hearing the multitude of the cry of his people he says i have heard your cry and the multitude of people speak in my name and so god is letting us know he he wants us to know that we're not just praying hallelujah we're not just praying in vain hallelujah that there is a prepared place for our prayers, hallelujah, and they go up before him, hallelujah. Our prayers are on the altar of God in a golden censer, hallelujah, 
Hallelujah. So God values our prayers when we pray. Hallelujah. Then the Lord began to speak. He says, daughter, and that's me. He calls me daughter because he, he my heart, because he knows me because I have a relationship with him. And he says, tell my people not to fear this enemy, Satan, the devil, Lucifer, whatever he's calling himself in this hour. He said, this enemy that you now see, you shall see no more. Tell them, I am come with speed and excellence, and the government shall be upon my shoulders. Many things have happened in your lifetime, says the Lord, but you have yet to see the Messiah with your own eyes. I am coming, children, to settle all things. I am coming with swift justice. I am coming to reward the faithful, those that endure, until the very end, but the end is not yet, says the Lord. Hallelujah. So God has just given us his mandate. He, he made a promise that he was coming. He made a promise that we are going to see him as he is. Hallelujah. Gee, he's coming to settle all things. Uh, things have not been balanced in the earth. Hallelujah. And our enemies have been working against us and he's saying that he's coming with swift justice in in politics and government in relationships and worldly matters the lord says he's coming with swift justice and he goes on to share scripture exodus 14 and 13 isaiah 9 and 6 and matthews 24 12 through 13. hallelujah and the scripture, Exodus 14, 13 says, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom you now see today, ye shall see them no more forever. So Egyptians is having reference to enemies. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be, hallelujah, shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, Isaiah 9 and 6, that's talking about Jesus. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that, he mahasata, ye God, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Matthews 24, 12 through 13. And people, we need to be declaring that we are the ones that are going to endure until the end and that we are saved. Hallelujah! Because I believe faith and relationship with the Lord. And the Father goes on to say, My word is sure. It is not in rivalry or competition with anyone or anything. Others try to compare my word, but it stands alone. The tempter, which is the enemy of God, can tempt, but he cannot draw. He may be able to show misleading evidence that will cause a, a caught off guard person, and this is the description of the Lord, to follow a path that only wolves would travel. Understand this important truth, children, and know when you are caught off guard. And so even though we may be believers and Christians believing the word and the heart of God, we can get caught off because of distractions, how we get distraction, distracted and how we begin to um, put insight into worldly things and believe worldly things, media, social media and all of that. And the Lord calls us caught off guard that we need to check ourselves and get back in our right place where we belong as Christians under the now faith movement. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. John 12, 31 through 32 states, Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And I, if I be lifted un up from the earth, will draw our men unto me. So Satan has a fate. He is going to be cast out. Hallelujah. And Jesus is saying that, when he is lifted up, he is the only one that can draw men unto him. He was lifted up on the cross. He was describing his death. If I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. So Satan does not have drawing power. He has distraction power. The enemy, says the Lord, makes an empty sound, but his sound is loud and is hollow, but it has no foundation. 
We have to examine statements to see if they are lies or to see if it's a truth. And it can't be part truth. It has to be all truth to be holy and righteously coming from the Lord. And the Lord goes on to say, A deafening sound causes a man to want that sound turned off. If he does not know where the sound is coming from, then he goes to look for that sound. Children, this is a trick. Once the enemy has your attention, he begins leading to a false path. And so I can remember times myself when I was lying in bed and I could hear sounds in the kitchen, sounds all over the house, sounds, you know, like things are falling, uh, things are up in the roof and everything, loud noises to uh, disturb me from my peace. And um, once I get up to go to investigate, then I'm out of my peaceful state because I'm looking to see what's wrong. And so that's a trick of the enemy. He makes loud noises through social media. He makes loud noises through our children, our children getting contrary and disorderly and rebellious uh, in our marriages. What we hear on social media, um, someone trying to get subscribers or get attention, uh, the headings, the headlines that they may use just to get you to click on whatever it is they want you to see or listen to. Hallelujah, Lord, you, that's not my purpose and that's not my goal. My goal is to have you follow me as I follow Christ. And when I began not to follow Christ, I'm asking you, please don't follow me. Praise God. And then the Lord goes on to say, the devil's words have no foundation, merit, or truth. We ought to be able to examine and know when it's a lie. The enemy's words cannot stand up to my court law, says the Lord. The purpose of the enemy's misleading is to bring my people into agreement with his lies and falsehoods. Be warned, children, if you follow a lie, you will carry a lie. And this is the word of the Lord. And I want to give a couple of more scriptures, Psalms 92 and 13. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. So the Lord does have a court. He does rule. He is king over the land, over all courts in the land. It's the highest court. Hallelujah. And so this is what we are going to be judged by. We're going to be judged in these physical bodies, whether we've done good or bad, right or wrong. We are going to be judged and, and rewarded accordingly. Matthew 16, 15 through 18. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Again, Matthew sixteen fifteen through 18. And so um, it's very important that we understand that this uh, scripture in Matthew 16, <clears throat> that we get some clarification here. Jesus is talking to Peter, and he is recognizing Peter as a man, not a deity. He calls out his name. He said, I know that you are Simon Peter. And Jesus references a rock, and the rock that he's talking about is not Peter. It's a foundational truth spoken by Peter. And so God is congratulating Peter for having discernment, for having ears to hear from the Father. This was a revelation revealed to Peter from God that Jesus was the Christ and that he was the son of the living God. And so after Peter spoke this statement, Jesus repeated it. He's given clarity to truth by confirming that he is the Christ and that he is the son of the living God. And by repeating what Peter spoke, Jesus established a precedence that he was the only one qualified to build his church. And that once the church was built, the gates of hell could not prevail against God's wisdom, his purpose, and his plan. And so since the devil knows spiritual laws, he would never be able to uh, erect the church. He knew this. He couldn't build the church. So his lifelong goal has been to destroy what Jesus built, the church, the place for believers to fellowship together, to learn, and to uh, be encouraged as we wait on our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, Yeshua. 
So I just wanted to share this word with you. Today is November the 28th, 2021. My name is Mary Adger. I represent In It For Him Ministries. Be blessed of the Lord.